we go. <laughs> All right, we're recording. And now let me pull up that screen. I think it's that one. I always get confused. There we go. It should be coming. I did whiteboard. Is that correct? It's not correct. My son tells me I do it wrong every single time. Okay, then come help me again, Kevin. Oh. You would think I would get it by now, but I have to use so many different devices these days that I just never get it right. Okay, we're recording at least. That one, yes. I should have known. I don't know why I keep doing, yeah. I know. What would we do without you? There we go. Your mom definitely needs you. All right, folks. Welcome to Worship with us at Buxton UMC. I am thankful for my son to help me and uh, thankful we're up and running now. What a nice, lovely winter scene. And we're going to have some snow this week as well, won't we? So that's fitting. All right. Winter Mission, dig deep for the Navajo Reservation. Sponsor a home water system. Give the ultimate gift, bring clean water and power to an entire family. We are trying to reach a goal of $4,500. And folks, we are nearly there. We're only about $600 short. So um, let's keep remembering uh, that in our giving. And this month, when we do our drive-by giving, I feel pretty confident that we're going to reach our goal. Speaking of this week... Ash Wednesday is this coming Wednesday. Can you believe it? We're starting Lent already. And we will be having an outdoor car service that evening at 7 p.m. in our parking lot. And so show up. There will be people to direct you for traffic and, um, and we'll give out details then. But um, I've been assured that we're going to be ready to go. So I'm excited about that. Next drive-by giving will be February 21st, so please remember that. Mm -hmm. And now let's prepare our hearts for this morning's worship. If you would like to light a candle at home, we invite you to do that. Uh, and let's have uh, Patty and Wendy who are sharing this morning's call to worship. It is not difficult to be God's beloved child. We are called to obey God's commandments and live in God's love. The ways which God ordains are days for peace and hope. The love of God shall conquer the world. Rejoice, O people of God, for God is near. Let's praise our God of power and might, our God of love and peace. Very nice. Thank you both. We have a special opening hymn today. This is a nice peppy little number. It's not in our hymnal, but um, it's one that I think a lot of you will know. Isn't the love of Jesus something wonderful? Mm -hmm. And I have asked Linda to actually do all three verses if she's willing, and we are going to sign the chorus, okay? So let's go over that. Isn't the love, you just cross your arms in front of you, love of Jesus. And this is wonderful. You've probably seen kids doing this, putting their hands up. Yeah. So just pretend you're at a, a rock concert or something. There's wonderful. The love of Jesus, something wonderful. And we keep doing that wonderful. It is, is just put your uh, pointer finger at your mouth as if you're speaking it is to me. Okay. So you take that pointer down from your mouth and then pointing to yourself. All right, Linda, we're ready to go. Take it away.
That was wonderful. And I could see some of you signing as well. Thank you to all of those who helped. All right. And now the one who has should have their microphone uh, unmuted would be Renee. And if you're not speaking, I would ask you to please mute your microphone. And that way that will help with our connection. And that way you may join me today in the opening prayer. Bless us with love, O merciful God, that may, we may love as you love, that we may show patience, tolerance, kindness, caring, and love to all. Bless us with love, O merciful God. Amen. Beautiful, Renee. Thank you so much. And Arlene can unmute and she can give us the children's message now. Morning, everyone, and happy Valentine's Day. <laughs> Why do we give Valentine's? When I had just turned five, we moved into Portland for the winter as we had to shut the farm up as my grandfather and grandmother moved to Framingham, Massachusetts to work at a hat factory so that they could earn money towards their social security. My grandfather had been a farmer and a Finnish carpenter and my grandmother worked beside him on the farm. So nothing had been set aside for their retirement. Needless to say, I didn't want to move to the city but had no choice. My mom was expecting my brother David at the time, and sometimes our chickpea road was not plowed from the church down around the corner, so my mother was worried about how she would make it to the hospital during a winter storm. February came quickly, and I had indeed made some friends. Not that I didn't miss my Buxton friends, because I really did. Valentine's Day was coming quickly, and our teacher, Miss Bettenwood, brought in 21 Kleenex boxes. She had asked the other teachers to contribute to it as well as bringing her own. We probably all remember decorating Kleenex boxes with construction paper, usually red, and sticking pink and white hats also cut from construction paper onto the sides of the box. The top was perfect to put in our collected Valentines. A week or so before our Valentine's party, a young boy by the name of Thomas didn't come to school for a couple of days. And when he returned, he looked very sad. It seemed his mom had become ill and would be in the hospital for many, many weeks before she would be able to return home to them. Thomas had a baby sister who went to live with their grandmother, but pa Thomas stayed in Portland with his dad. The day of the party during our recess, as it was too cold to go out, we noticed Miss Bettenwood putting a valentine with a different colored lollipop stuck on each one of our ours and putting it into our decorated boxes. Each and every one of us, when Thomas was called out of the room for a few minutes, put our Valentine with a lollipop into Thomas's box. Oh. This was not an easy thing to, to do because candy then was quite scarce. When it came time for us to walk around the room, Thomas was back then to deliver our Valentines, which we had made into each other's boxes, we then sat down, opened our boxes before we had our Kool-Aid and the cupcakes with icing and sprinkles on top. We saw Thomas opening up his box. 
he tried not to break down when he found all the valentines with a lollipop stuck to them. He stood up and said how thankful he was and that he would always remember this Valentine's Day. I heard many, many years later that Thomas went to Vietnam and did not return home. And I know in my heart that love was shown that Valentine's Day in 1952 and that our Lord was with Thomas all through his life. If you have someone today you want to let know how much you care for them, do not put it off. Because remember, as we've learned, God is love. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Our heart is full today, Lord, with happiness for the loved ones, loved ones you have so graciously given us. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank, Thank you. you. Lynn. Thank you, Lynn. That was beautiful. All right. And now our Jean has the more challenging task. She's going to do 1 Corinthians 13 for us for our reading. 1 Corinthians 13, verses 1 through 3 or excuse me, one through 13. If I speak in the tongues of men and of angels, but have not love, I am a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. And if I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith, so as to remove mountains, but have not love, I am nothing. If I give away all I have, and if I deliver up my body to be burned, but have not love, I gained nothing. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. Mm -hmm. it, all, love, all, it always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails. For what we know is incomplete, and what we prophesy is incomplete. But when what is complete comes, then what is incomplete will be done away with. When I was a child, I spake as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. Now we see but a poor reflection as in a mirror. Then we shall see face to face. Now I know in part. Then I shall know fully, even as I am fully known. And now these three remain, faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. Beautiful, Jean. Thank you. I know that it was rather distracting having all of those different <laughs> slides. You did a great job. And now we have some special music from uh, our Elise and our Linda. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Prophecies will pass away, love never ends. Tongues will cease their songs to
things, hopes all things, endures all things. and Linda that was lovely and now our bill is up for the morning gospel reading and the gospel this morning is Mark 12 28 to 34 the greatest commandment one of the teachers of the law came and heard them debating noticing that Jesus had given them a good answer he asked him of all the commandments, which is the most important? The most important one, answered Jesus, is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. The second is this. Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. Well said, teacher, the man replied. You are right in saying that God is one and there is no other but him. To love God with all your heart, with all your understanding, and with all your strength, and to love your neighbor as yourself is more important than all burnt offerings and sacrifices. When Jesus saw that he had answered wisely, he said to him, You are not far from the kingdom of God. And from then on, no one dared ask him any more questions. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Bill. That was wonderful. Well, our morning message, the title, How Do I Love Thee? Let Me Count the Ways, is borrowed from the title of Son at the 43, written by Elizabeth Barrett Browning. Way, and she was way back from the uh, early 1800s. Love is a four-letter word. L-O-V-E. In English, the word love is used in many ways. We don't have different words to describe the different kinds of expressions of human love. In the Bible, though, there are four words used in Greek to describe four different kinds of human love. And so today's message relies heavily on the work of C.S. Lewis, who wrote this work, The Four Loves, uh, back in 1960, and I, the good news today is I am not going to ask you to read the work, okay? I'm going to summarize a very big summary of that work for biblical kinds of love, okay? They are storhe, which is affection, and that can be the affection that we have towards a child, someone more vulnerable, um, a person, for example, with uh, special needs, um, pets even. Okay, those are all different forms. And I am getting a message that my internet uh, connection is unstable. So do remember to please, um, if you haven't muted, please do so because we don't want any background competition noise. It might get tricky. Philia, that is friendship. And so I, I am showing my, uh, my vintage here by putting a picture up there of a popular TV show from years gone by, Friends. Eros is romantic love and agape is charity or an unconditional godly love. And I thought that Mother Teresa and the work she did in Calcutta was a beautiful reflection of that. So we are now going to play a game. Okay, we haven't done a game in a while and this will be fun. Name that form of love. And now the rules are, there's going to be two men and two women, and they must answer the questions. Actually, it'll end up being four and four. Um, you're going to need to be fast because they may get harder as we go. So we're going to have some guys versus girls here, okay? And I want you to have fun. And as always, I, I'll have to be the, the one to say this, retired clergy have to let the lady have a chance first, okay? <laughs> All right, so here we go. Just a review, four biblical kinds of love. Storhe, affection. Philia, friendship. 
Eros Romantic and Agape Charity. Okay, so here we go. Let's play a game. Name that love. You're going to have to unmute for this, okay? And you're going to have to shout Eros. it right Eros. Eros. Okay, okay. That went to the women. They got it. Okay, romantic love right there. Okay, the first four examples come from the Bible. So hopefully they'll be easier. That was Samson and Delilah. Let's see the next biblical example. Name that love. And his mother used to make for him a little robe and take it to him each year when she went up with her husband to offer the yearly sacrifice. This is about Storhe. Hannah. Storhe. Very good, Storhe. Nice. Okay. Let's see. Next. Name that love. Jesus weeps over the death of his friend Lazarus. And this has to go to the guys. Yeah. The, women, the women have already done there too. So do we have any oh. guys there who can, who can name that love? Jesus weeps over the death of his friend. <laughs> any guys? How about it? Philia, yes, Philia. Like, think of Philadelphia, the city of brotherly love. That's how I always remembered that one. Okay, very good, very good. The poor guys, there aren't as many of them, so they're getting, they're, yeah, they have it a lot harder. Name that love. Jesus washes his disciples' feet. Go to Jorge for that one. The what one? Jorge, Jorge. Agape, do you mean? That's the one, yeah. <laughs> the, uh, the godly love, right? A godly love, servanthood, very good. <laughs> okay, agape, charity, unconditional godly love. Well done. Now we have four more that are not from the scriptures. Let's keep going. So now everybody can play again. Name that love. Mary Ann, age four, says, love is when your puppy licks your face even after you left him alone all day. Philia. Philia. Not Philia. Storhe. No. Storhe. Eros. Storhe. Affection. That was that one oh. where we can have it with children, pets, you know, things like that. Okay. Next, Noah, age eight, says, love is when you kiss all the time. My mommy and daddy are like that. They look gross when they kiss. <laughs> Arrows. 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 Okay, here we go. Name that love. Rebecca, age eight, says, when my grandmother got arthritis, she couldn't bend over and paint her toenails anymore. So my grandfather does it for her all the time, even when his hands got arthritis, too. That's love. I know. Isn't that yeah. zero? Okay, we have agape, agape. There, right? Agape. Very good. Okay, and last one. Name that love. Brian, age four, says, I know my friend loves me because he gives me all his old clothes and has to go out and buy new ones. <laughs> yeah, right. Delia. <laughs> Delia, very good. All right. Friendship. Fun. Did you have some fun with that? <laughs> Mm -hmm. I hope so. Okay, we'll mute again. I hope you had fun. That was the idea. And to get you thinking about those different forms, because it is tricky for us when we, uh, when we don't know the different forms off the tops of our heads. That can be tricky. I have to make sure um, I have everything I need here. I have so many slides today that I have to have a second computer set up so I know where I'm headed. Okay, all right. How do I love me, love thee, let me count the ways. As we learn from our little game, that four letter word in English that spells the word love, that one little word describes the many forms of expressing human love. Love is so much more than the Valentine's Day romantic love. There is affectionate love that we share with children and even with God's creation, such as our pets. And there's also the strong bond love that defines friendship. Proverbs 27, nine says, perfume and incense bring joy to the heart and the pleasantness of a friend springs from their heartfelt advice. 
And then, of course, there's that love, which we all Christians, we all strive for, agape love. The love of charity that is unconditional. It is not self-seeking and it radiates mm -hmm. outward in service to others before ourselves in godly love. That is not an easy form of love. In fact, it often hurts. And should anyone tell you that it is easy, then probably that person is actually not achieving agape love. Agape love is the love that Christ had for us. It washes the feet as a slave to those who will betray and even deny knowing us. Agape love is Christ's words of forgiveness at his crucifixion. Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Agape love always is putting the needs of others before ourselves. Now, in that scripture that Bill read for us today, the religious leaders were trying to trick Jesus. So they asked him, what was the most important commandment in all of the law? And Jesus responded by summarizing all the law into only two commandments. He began with what in Judaism is known as the Shema, meaning that one must heed from the scriptures. It's a basic declaration of Jewish belief found in the scriptures. Hear, O Israel, says the Shema, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. This is the Shema. It is that basic declaration from the scriptures that must be heeded, a rule to live by. And Jesus continued by saying, the second is this, love your neighbor as yourself. There is no greater commandment than these. Now, we Christians have come to call this teaching of Jesus' summary of the law and the commandments into that one little nugget that we are all to strive to achieve, and we call this teaching the golden rule. And to simplify it even further would be to say that we are to love God and love God's people. And by God's people, I don't mean only those who look like us or who are Methodists like us, or even who practice the same faith as us. I mean all God's created people, all of humankind, love God and love others. Oh, friends, it sounds so simple, and yet it is so hard, as we learned earlier in our game. But there are so many ways that we can love. So which one was Jesus talking about? Well, there's a time and a place for them all. God created for us all the covenant of marriage for romantic love and the hearts to have a very affectionate love toward the most vulnerable in our world. Children, those who have special needs, and even pets. There's a very beautiful affectionate love that we can share with those who are vulnerable but desperately need love. And that form of appropriate affectionate love is affirming fulfilling, and above all, safe. That kind of affectionate love would never cause harm in any way. Well, God has also given us the love of friendship to give us wise counsel, fulfillment, and fun together. And that kind of friendship also will be faithful to the bitter end, no matter what you may be walking through. When David was being hunted down by Saul, who was obsessed with jealousy and hatred, David was blessed with the friendship he shared with Jonathan. And when Jesus was dying on the cross, his mother and his aunt were there, but so two friends, the beloved disciple John and Mary Magdalene. They were both there with him through to his final dying breath. Have you ever had a friend walk with you through difficult times, trials of all sorts, yet no matter what they were, that person was right there with you, next to you, all the way. If you've experienced that, then you know what a blessing the love of a true friend is. And we all are called to love in that way and be that kind of friend for others. It's not easy. 
To go through sufferings with people is not an easy thing, but this form of love is so special. And if we truly love God, then we will be that loving kind of friend, no matter what the adversity is that our friend may face. Finally, agape love, that servant love that works until our hands are raw and yet still we have a smile on our face. It's Mother Teresa love. It's the ability to not only see those who may look different than we do or speak differently than we do or hold different opinions than we do, but rather than focus on the differences, this love is unconditional no strings attached. You don't give or receive it because of anything you've done. Rather, we are called to give this kind of unconditional godly love of charity to all people, even those people whom we don't agree with. And how do we give them love? Through service. We wash their feet. We offer them radical hospitality. We become a slave to their needs, seeking nothing in return. Now, if you're feeling a bit exhausted by now, I wouldn't be surprised. Loving as the Lord has called us to love is not an easy task. It's constant work. And much of that work is extremely difficult. And we're called to love in this way tirelessly. But I assure you of this, to love as God has called us to love is also a work that will bring us great joy. It's like what we are doing in mission right now for raising funds for the Navajo. Is it easy for us now in a pandemic to commit to raising $4,500? No, but it is joyful. To know that an entire family will be blessed and perhaps even lives saved because of what we're doing that is agape love, and it gives me great joy, and I know it does you too. It also inspires us to love even more, to serve more, to do more, because we love our Lord. Let's go back to our title now of our sermon. We use the first line of Elizabeth Barrett Browning's sonnet number 43, How do I love thee? Let me count the ways. Well, I think it goes without saying that our God has loved us in ways that are absolutely infinite, far too many for us to be able to count. And we are called to do the same for God's global people. Now, you may think to yourself, but this task is too big. Where do I start? How do I begin? Choose one. If you know someone who looks like they need a friend, start there and be that friend. If you know someone who needs help, but you really don't know that person very well, reach out in agape love and see if you can do anything to help them. Whatever you choose, choose this one thing. Choose to love and love deeply from the heart. In a day and age when the term Christian conjures up ill feelings for many people outside the church, be the change that is so desperately needed. Be the true love of Christ. And may everyone come to know that we are Christians by our love. Let's pray together. Holy God, we know that love is a four letter word and it seems so easy. And yet, Lord, to really and truly love as you would have us love, it's hard. It's very difficult, Lord, and it's tireless work. We pray, Lord God, that you would guide us by your Holy Spirit, that we may be more loving. As Christ loved us, may we love others. And Lord, now we lift up the names of those people and situations that we know of from this week that are in need of loving prayers. The family of Sally and Barry and Sean. Wendy and Paul. 
Jane, Bud, Kathy, Jeff, and Josh. In these Dave is very sick. Annie and Billy. And Lord God, in this pandemic, we pray that the vaccine program will continue to uh, roll out those vaccines, that more and more people who need the vaccine will be able to receive it, Lord, that we will soon have our most vulnerable populations um, cared for. And we pray, Lord God, for continued healing in our world and in our land. And now we pray the prayer, Lord God, that Jesus taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I want to thank you all for the financial support you have given this week. We remember the words of John Wesley, our founder. Make all you can. Save all you can. Give all that you can. Amen to that. And now we have our final hymn, and that will be done by our Linda. We have two verses of we, they will know we are Christians by our love. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Linda. And I do want to remind you one more time that Ash Wednesday begins this week and there will be an outdoor car service. So we'll be staying in our cars, um, but we will have that at 7 p.m. on Ash Wednesday using our church radio station for all who can make it. And now our benediction written by Reverend Tom Cundiff. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior and friend, may the love of God binding us together and building us up, and may the fellowship of the Holy Spirit knitting us together as a church family be with us until we meet again. Amen. God bless you all, and know that you are loved. Yeah.